Okay, so here we have the uh, engine shock absorber or clutch drive. So um, inside here, there are a lot of uh, rubbers. And so the outside isn't directly connected to the inside. It's connected by the rubbers so that um, it takes up the shock, hence the name shock absorber. So um, if the engine accelerates rapidly, it's just a little bit of give before it, it transfers the power down to the clutch and the gearbox through here. Without that sort of rubber, it, you can snap chains and damage other components and so on because of the shock of rapid acceleration or whatever. So most bikes and cars will have some form of shock absorber, often sometimes in the rear wheel, sometimes on the front engine sprocket. And in this case, it's on the rear sprocket and uh, it's in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, bend up these tab washers, take these screws out, take this cover plate off here, and then we'll be able to see uh, the condition of the rubbers inside because they take a, a huge amount of pounding and they can break up. Now just looking, I can see those, these are little, these are actually little bits of rubber, these little black dots. So it could be that some of the rubbers inside have started to break up. Uh, but we'll see when we get the cover off. Okay, so we've uh, undone the nuts and we've taken the, uh, the cover the cover plate off and that reveals these uh, rubbers underneath. Now, the rubbers aren't in bad condition. They're not perfect. There's a couple. Um, there's sort of a few chips out of the, out of the corners. And, and what happens is that because there's so much pressure here, the... Um, when the uh, the rubbers are compressed by this spider, as it's called in the middle, um, the rubber kind of squeezes underneath the veins, and it and, and it gets damaged by the vein. Um, so these aren't bad, and I'm in two minds as to whether to replace them or not, because there's signs of wear starting, and of course once wear starts, then it only accelerates. But um, these are original rubbers or probably original rubbers and then we have the problem of replacement rubbers and are they going to be as good as the originals because I did once have a set of rubbers that just broke up straight away after I fitted them um, but I think uh, I am going to replace them and trust that uh, by now suppliers have got things a bit sorted out um, and uh, that the new rubbers will be a good quality uh, you can, some people, uh, fit slightly harder rubbers than standard. Um, but the, the problem with that is that um, the whole point of this is, is, as we were saying before, is a shock absorber and it takes up any shocks. And of course, if you, if you have a hard rubber, which is almost like not compressible, uh, then you're transferring the shocks to the gearbox, gearbox etc. And so, you know, you could end up doing um, sort of damage. Uh, so anyway, we're fitting. Gonna, I, I am going to order new ones, and we're going to fit. We'll take these out, and we'll fit the new uh, replacement rubbers. Um, because yeah, I mean these are just beginning to break up, and, and the problem being, as we we're saying, that once they start breaking up, then the um, that accelerates quite rapidly that wear. So yeah, we'll replace them. I mean they're in good condition, but um, yeah, I think we'll replace them. Great, so after some delay, the uh, new rubbers have arrived. So what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, lever out these old rubbers. And then we have the rather difficult uh, task of uh, putting the new ones in because they, it's very tight. There's no play there at all. Uh, obviously, if there was play, then the rubbers would probably be destroyed pretty quickly. Um, so we'll see how we get on. Normally, I don't actually have too much trouble doing this job and I know I'm going to live to regret saying that but we're just going to get like a screwdriver and just prise these out and then we'll have a go at putting the new ones in uh, I will note now that the um, the back of the rubbers because they're they're sort of angled okay so the back edge goes towards the spider so that's these veins here which go on the spider and then the pointed end go to the chain wheel on the uh, outside. Okay, 
so they fit uh, like that way around and not not that way around okay right here we go okay we've uh, got the old rubbers out and uh, we're just going to inspect the uh, the spider the central spider as it's called uh, mainly because these rivets that hold it's actually in two pieces and these rivets uh, can become loose and uh, that's a problem I think I'm right in saying that these spiders are still unobtainable so uh, it is a problem if, if they aren't right the other thing is to watch out um, for some of these uh, veins they always seem to be uh, tilted slightly one way um, but uh, just what we're looking for is hoping they're not massively leaning backwards and I think they're fine the only slight problem we've got here is the that's a bearing surface there's a radial like needle roller bearing goes on there and that's obviously just beginning to go I, I think we're okay but if uh, if I could I would consider redoing that I think that's okay but um, and the uh, and that's where the thrush washer goes on the back and that's fine um, so that's the only worry of concern I've got but um, I think it's it's, it's okay uh, if it was easy to, to redo then I would but it's not so uh, I think it's fine as is uh, just going to check all the teeth and everything are all okay I'm fairly sure there's no chipped teeth no missing teeth etc and then we're going to have the jolly fun time of now trying to put the new rubbers uh, back in between the uh, between the chain wheel between the chain wheel and the spider which is always fun uh, so I'll go off camera to do that and probably see you in a couple of hours and uh, after some choice choice words but we'll see how we get on okay there we go the new ones are in and uh, indeed it wasn't too bad it wasn't too bad I know people have all sorts of nightmares about doing these, but I find it's okay. I just have a screwdriver and just lever them in. Uh, the long back uh, to the spider, the short nose uh, to the chain wheel, and the long flat at the at the bottom. I did actually put one, start to put one in, you know, sort of facing the right way, but with a long bit at the at the back there. It, you know, it looks it's obvious that the long flat goes to the chain wheel uh, right um, so that's done and uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to make sure as far as I can that the rubbers are all fully home and that the chain wheel is uh, that the spider is fully down in the in the chain wheel because we're going to put the cover on next uh, the outer cover and it's very important that um, the spider and the rubbers aren't protruding higher than they should be uh, and we'll, we'll come on to that in a minute as to why so I'm just going to spend uh, some time making sure these rubbers are down and making sure the spiders is fully down and, it, and isn't sort of bul bulging up above the chain wheel right so uh, I've just been using the vice grips to squeeze the spider and the chain wheel together to make sure the spider is fully down fully seated because uh, you know it can bulge up the rubbers can like hold it out and it's important to try and get it fully seated because when we put the cover on we're going to torque it up and of course if the if the spider is high then when we torque it down it's going to give us like a false torque because we're going to be trying to push the spider down at the same time Whereas the spider should already be fully down, and then we torque uh, the the bolts down. Okay, so important to try and get this as fully down as possible. So now I've got the cover plate that holds the whole shock absorber unit together. I'm just going to put it in place. Try and make sure that I've actually lined up the plate with the holes, and then we have these uh, special high tensile bolts very important to check that these are okay and not worn or above all stretched because they are under massive pressure 
we put them on through these rather strange uh, lock tabs. Uh, but the bolts are under pressure because, of course, when the uh, when the whole shock absorber unit is in uh, is working, then the rubbers are squeezed, and of course, they try to bulge outwards. And outwards will mean against this cover plate, so uh, th there can be. I've got to put the lock tab in. There can be very strong uh, forces in there, so it's a very important to make sure that we have bolts that are in very good condition. These are proper high tensile bolts, and um, because as I think I've said before. The, uh, what can happen is, and, and I have heard it happen on at least one occasion, unfortunately, is that uh, the, uh, these bolts, one of these bolts uh, snapped, uh, the head snapped off, and then the head got caught on the chain wheel underneath the primary chain, and uh, the primary chain then snapped as a result. The primary chain then wrapped itself around the... Uh, drive the uh, crankshaft and uh, the engine sort of like exploded when it, it shattered all the crankcases and uh, so another very good uh, Facebook friend that I have is uh, Jeff Mitchell and uh, he has put me in touch uh, with this uh, with this um, special tool for talking down the bolts on the shock absorber because they have to be done up to the exact torque. Too tight and uh, the bolts will stretch and uh, you know, they can shear. Too loose and the whole thing becomes loose and as it's loose it will become looser and looser and again the bolts can shear. So this is a snazzy uh, device that he told me he put me on to and basically it's a one setting torque wrench and you put it on and when it reaches the set torque then it will click yeah so this one is set to uh, uh, three foot pounds which is the uh, recommended torque for this uh, this cover plate to hold the whole shop absorber unit together. So we'll tighten these up gradually and then when they get to the set torque uh, they, the uh, tool should just click. Now where did I buy it from? Uh, Jeff did tell me and obviously because I bought it <laughs> but I must admit, I can't remember where that was now, whether it was on eBay or Amazon, I can't remember. But this is called a uh, Burzman. This is called a Burzman. And I think it's a, you know, called a preset talk. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I'm sure if you look hard enough, you can find them on the internet. And the only uh, the only problem I had is it, it comes uh, you know with just a, an open end where are where's the camera open end so then I got an adapter that then went on my small socket okay so just screwing these down bit by bit nearly tight now there we go this is the tool Slipping, there we go, to say it's up to torque. In our case, it's three foot pounds. Well, this is actually four NM newtons, newton meters, I don't know. But that's the equivalent to three foot pounds. There we go. And I think they're all up to torque now. And there we go and all I need to do now is bend the locking tabs over and that's the uh, shoppers over unit done.